Hi guys, Ada here as always. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another episode of Fabric Friday, where we do style illustration, style analysis, fabrics, and everything in between. And today, guys, we have another amazing style to illustrate, to analyze, just something very chic to show. <laughs> And I'm going to show you the easiest way to go about cutting and sewing this style. You guys know it's Fabric Friday. We'll do style illustration and style analysis. Before we go into the video, make sure you hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed. And the notification bell so that whenever I post a video, you will get notified. Okay? <music> to very classy and very beautiful styles you know when you're a beautiful girl <laughs> okay i'm kidding with you guys but this style is so beautiful it's so lovely and it is very easy to cut and to sew you guys know that the previous episode of fabric friday i analyzed an asymmetric pencil gown today i'm going to be analyzing an asymmetric mermaid gown and trust me it is very easy to cut and to sew and I'm going to show you this in a bit, like we always do here on Fabric Friday. We are going to start with the fabric. Hmm. We are going to start with the fabric. And this style was made with a scuba fabric. A scuba fabric is a stretchy fabric. Now, any style, any fabric that can hold a style can definitely, definitely sew this style. Okay, because you need something that will be able to hold the style, that will be able to fit your curves and your bend and you know, all those good stuff. You don't want to go for really soft fabric like silk and chiffon they won't really do a good job with this style okay so if you're considering sewing this style an acara print will go for it a scuba fabric will go for it just fabrics that can hold the style will go for it okay you don't really need like really really stiff stiff fabric you know you don't really need really stiff fabric you want one that can you know can easily blend in maybe the strength of the fabric is around 5.0 which is like average can go for lots of styles okay to start up making this style one thing you have to have at the back of your mind is freehand cutting will not work for this style it will definitely not work so you you have to draft a pattern and the pattern you are going to draft and for this style looking at this style the, the style was cut in one whole piece you know when we have our gowns where we have like two pieces like the blouse part and the skirt part and the journey together to form a gown no looking at this style around the belly button side below the bust you know below the bust you don't have any cuts there around the navel you don't have any cuts there so you know that this is a one piece gown okay it is one piece it was cut one way and i'm just going to show you that shortly in the illustration clip now this is a symmetric gown and it has a bust that from the picture here it has a bust that is a mermaid gown the back is longer than the front as we can see from here i can't really tell if the back part has a goddess it doesn't look like it has a goddess from here but definitely some you know some extension some extension was done at the back which made the the middle side of the back part of this gown a little longer a little flowier if you don't know how to cut a mermaid skirt i have a detailed tutorial here on this channel on how to go about cutting and sewing a mermaid skirt if you don't know how to cut an asymmetric neckline i also did that in the previous fabric friday video check the link in the description box you'll see it there but i'm still going to show you a clip here on this channel on how to go about you know cutting the neckline and cutting you know the mermaid skirt now like i said this gown is a one piece gown so if you want to sew this gown let's just quickly dive into sewing this gown if you want to sew this gown you have to draft a pattern and you have to draft a pattern for the front side and for the back side now this gown has like a bust that it doesn't have this normal that that you know extends from around the nipple point downwards towards the waist part of this of this um of this of, of the gown that's for the front part it has the bust that for the back part it definitely has like a normal back that are we together so it normally it has like a normal back that that's for the back part and for the front part it has the bust that now the back part has is what is housing the zip or the zipper whatever you call it of this gown because how are you supposed to get into this gown if it does not have a zip so the back part of this gown definitely definitely has a zip i'm going to quickly show you how to go about draft pattern for this gown okay 
okay so to start the pattern i've gone ahead to mark my armhole point my waist point my hips point and my flared point so what i'm going to do here is i'm just going to drop the neckline the armhole curve and i'm going to insert like my measurement you know i'm just trying to give you guys an illustration of a pattern do you understand before someone comes to the comment section start telling me that thing you drafted is too small mm -mm. so i've marked my bust point i'm shaping out my hips right now to the flared point okay so this is what we have here ample point waist point hips point and flare point so from that flared point i'm going to draw a slant slanted line to to uh insert my flared so this is what we have here guys now when i was doing after doing that you're going to have add your sewing allowance to the pattern and when i was doing this i tried to make my drawings very very strong so that it will imprint on the second part of the pattern so this is what we have here you know this pattern is on a fold i'm just going to open it up because i did it and it was imprinted like the drawing was strong i'm just going to trace the pattern on the second side of the paper so i'll have like the full dress pattern here so if you are wondering that um, your pattern paper will not be big enough to draft uh the to draft for a whole dress all you have to do is sell your tape or gum your pattern papers together and you have like full working pieces okay so this is what we have here now to insert the asymmetric neckline all you're going to do is from one side of the armhole you just slant in the neckline as you can like as that's what am i saying as like what i'm doing here let me not bite my tongue now that shaded part is the place we are going to cut off okay so you can see that drafting the asymmetric neckline is very simple and very easy as you can see what i did here i just slanted it into the other half of the neckline and when i was done with that i just used my scissors to cut out the pattern so i'll have like a working piece okay so after cutting this is what we have here guys this is what the front pattern looks like i remember i said that the front pattern has a breast dart okay so this is what the front pattern looks like we are going to go ahead to mark the back pattern and of course the fabric the paper the pattern paper will be on a fold so we'll get the the front pattern fold it into two okay you're still going to maintain that fold of into two make sure you're working with the side that is not slanted then you're going to trace the whole outline of the front pattern on the back pattern okay as you can see i didn't start the pattern from the sides I gave a little allowance from the middle part because of the 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 tail we are going to attach to the back part okay after tracing out the outline of the front pattern you want to make sure your bust point your waist your hip point and your flare point you want to make sure that you transfer those points to the back pattern as well before you take off the front pattern and this is what we have here guys i'm just going to make my lines um, more visible and firm so this is what we have here then i went ahead to draw the lines that's those points i marked i went ahead to draw the lines and i labeled them waistline hip line flare point and i also added the sewing allowance so from the side this is the back pattern of course we have to add the zip allowance so i just added the zip allowance and this is what we have here guys this is the zip allowance i'm going to tag the zip allowance So you guys know the back part has like a tail around the zip allowance part and it has this light high low effect for the back part so for the flare point i'm just going to draw out the tail this pattern i kind of <laughs> i didn't really gauge it very well but you guys can get the idea of what i want to do so from the flare point of the back 
I drew out the uh, the tail for the back part and I connected it to the side with this high low effect okay so I'm just going to shade that part so you don't get really really confused this is the tail part like i told you guys the back part around the middle has a tail okay so that is the part we just extended i'm going to go ahead now to insert the zip allowance to make sure that there's still zip allowance along the extended tail that's for the back part and you can see how i just quietly sweetly inserted it in <laughs> i'm being funny guys so this is what the one side of the back pattern looks like this is zip allowance this is the high low effect for the down part and like i said we're just going like I, like we did for the front part we're just going to trace the pattern on the other side and this is made possible because when i was drafting i kind of made my drawing very very strong so that it will imprint on the second side of the pattern so this is what we have here after um tracing out the second side the next thing i went ahead to do was to cut out the pattern So after cutting the pattern this is what we have here now to create the asymmetric look for the neckline for the back pattern we're going to take the front pattern and we're going to lay it on the back pattern like this you guys have said i stop saying like so so you're going to lay it on the front on the back pattern like this and from that asymmetric point on the back pattern you're just going to trace it on the front pattern on the front pattern i'm going to trace it on the back pattern before i confuse you people then that place i'm shading is where you are going to cut off so this is just where you are going to cut off and i used my scissors and i cut it off you guys can see that it's coming together already this is what the back pattern looks for it does the zip allowance and secure a pin so you guys really have an idea what it really 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 looks like now i've opened it up you can see what the back looks like if you put the front on it you can see how well the back and the front looks good together now you've seen how to go ahead to drag the pattern for this gown how to drag the front part and the back part of this gown now what you're going to do quickly is you're going to spread that pattern on the fabric after spreading the pattern of the fabric you know normally for for our patterns we normally like um, spread it halfway and you cut but because this is an asymmetric gown we can't really do halfway you know pattern drafting so we are going to do like full way and when we are spreading on the fabric we're just going to spread it open if you if you are if you're used to drafting patterns you know that you always, always draft like half part of a pattern fold your fabric into two and place the pattern on top but for this style we can't do that because it's a it's an asymmetric neckline okay so you are literally going to open up your pattern spread it on top use your um z roller cutter or your scissors to cut the pattern through you are going to do this for the front part and also for the back part of the gown okay now for to sew this gown what you are quickly going to do after joining after cutting the front part and the back part is for the back part you're going to join it around the zip allowance from the top to the bottom you're going to pick your darts okay now for the front part you're going to insert your bust dart then you join the the front part of the gown to the back part of the gown using your your shoulder lines you know it's an asymmetric gown so using just one shoulder line that you have then you're going to go ahead to join the sides after this you're going to give it a really 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 good press then you go ahead to attach your zip you, you can use like an invisible zip or any zip you find fancy just make sure it blends well with the style give it a good press as well because this is a stretchy fabric you don't want it bending or coiling okay so you want to give the zipper a really 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 good press okay you turn over the neckline sometimes for scuba fabric like when i made um this bridesmaid dress i think uh, i will link those tutorials in the in the description box so you can check the icon here when i made um those and um, the bridal gown for my cousin's wedding and also for my friend's wedding i didn't really turn over the hem 
of the gown because I just did a clean cut with my scissors so if you want to do that you can do that as well but if you want to turn over the down part that's the hem of the gown you want to do it neatly maybe half an inch fold okay half an inch fold and you, you sew it around make sure it's very very neat if you can't boast of neat stitches just give it a clean cut with your scissors make sure it's clean sharp scissors and it's clean and it's nice nobody will notice that you didn't even sew the hem part of the gown after that for the design on the shoulder you can just cut something circular you know you guys i told you that when it comes to sewing sewing has a lot to do with photocopy or try or or mimicking so for for the design on the shoulder you can cut something that looks like uh you can cut a circle grip it in the middle or to test so to form the design like i said you are going to cut something that's a little circular or you can cut like a half circle on a fold i folded this paper into four initially i folded into two but then i went ahead to fold into four i drew sort of like a half circle here i folded into two so that one will be the main piece and the other one will be the lining then i went ahead to fold so the simple thing you're going to do here if you're trying to create it is fold you sew the hem and you kind of pick two third of the circle and snuggle it together to form like a ruffle then you bend the ruffle okay you can see it already looks like the main thing we're trying to get and you kind of attach it to the gown so this is just like a very easy way to mimic the design on the gown see that this this um, design on the shoulder part is kind of embellished so you want to get like another fabric that has embellishment if you have the time you can also create your own embellishment but this one here looks like the fabric had its own embellishment or its own patches okay so you can do that then you attach it um, to the shoulder line with the gum then you go ahead to attach it with you know your needle work and guys this is the easiest way the simplest way and the fastest way to go about cutting and sewing this style i know you guys it look as if i rushed through the video but trust me the guy the gown is very simple and easy to cut and to sew give and take you can make this gown in let's say two hours because it's it's not much trust me two hours yeah and if let's say maybe three hours but three hours is just so much trust me three hours looks so 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 much for me for someone like me i think i can make the gown in one hour 30 minutes or two hours that's how simple and easy it is to cut and to sew this gown if you enjoyed this video make sure you give the video a thumbs up don't forget to hit the subscribe button let me know in the comment section if you're going to try making this gown and i'll see you in my next video make sure you check out my other videos make sure you subscribe okay i'll see you in my next video bye guys